eight hours away from Calgary, in a small community called Proctor, sits a curious-looking 3D-printed concrete house. With gorgeous views of the Kootenay Lake and mountains, this tiny house fits beautifully into the surrounding landscape. This is the Fibonacci House, built by Twente Additive Manufacturing, or TAM. It is a 35 square meter or 375 square foot structure shaped like an extruded Fibonacci spiral. They flew me out to visit the house and their 3D printing facility, which is right next to it. Their only request was that my review would be completely honest and unbiased. So in this video, we're going to cover the good, bad and the ugly of this 3D printed concrete house. Let's first look at how the building was made. An outline for the foundation was printed in the factory in separate parts. After the concrete cured, the pieces were placed on site just 50 feet away. Insulating foam was sprayed inside and outside the foundation perimeter. Concrete was pumped over the foam and leveled off. Next, 20 separate wall pieces were 3D printed in the factory. The company has developed a very unique 9-axis 3D printer with an ABB robot and custom-made gantry. Every wall uses a two-leaf cavity wall construction method. Horizontal rebar was added in between the printed layers for extra support. The house was made with a K1 concrete mix with a pre-mixed accelerant. All you need to do is add the right amount of water and pump it out of one nozzle. When all 20 pieces were printed and cured, the ends were cut off with a saw for continuous insulation, minimal thermal bridging and reduced condensation. Next, the prefabricated panels were assembled with a lifting crane. Polyurethane foam insulation was sprayed in the cavity in 12 to 14 inch increments to ensure complete curing. The house was painted with the grey elastomeric paint with 300% elasticity. This provides additional water repellency and bridges microfractures. The total volume of concrete used is 800,000 cubic meters. 3D printed concrete columns in the front of the house support a massive wooden canopy. These were printed with a more expensive K2 concrete mix where an accelerant was added right before pumping at the nozzle. The K2 mix allows for finer layers and faster curing. These gorgeous curved columns were left unpainted, so they are a different color than the house. The walls were printed and installed in five weeks by four workers for $6,000. However, finishing the rest of the house brought the total cost up to $100,000. This is proof that walls are one of the smallest and cheapest parts of building a house. Cedar and fir wood siding on the exterior of the house and the underside of the canopy was harvested from the surrounding community forest. An open plan kitchen and living space are on the first floor of this tiny home. A shower is tucked into the narrowest part of the spiral shaped floor plan. The upper level is reached by a ladder. It can accommodate two adults and two children. This is the first fully 3D printed home on Airbnb. Alright, now let's discuss all the good things about this project. Twente Additive Manufacturing is run by a small group. They are some of the most creative, entrepreneurial, down-to-earth, honest and fun-loving people I have ever met. They are passionate about 3D printing and are pushing form and material exploration. The Fibonacci house is not just form for form's sake. They chose a spiral because it would have been very expensive to make the shape with traditional form work. Printing a curved wall with different radii is not an issue when using a 3D printer. TAM even 3D printed a sculptural table leg and bathroom sink to show off the versatility of the robot. The front handle is in the shape of a Fibonacci spiral. The quality of the 3D printed beads is excellent. They were straight and even with very few wobbles. The cedar wood adds warmth to the interiors and contrasts the cold looking concrete. Laying out furniture in a curved space is quite difficult, but they did an excellent job. It doesn't feel like a cramped space. The bathroom is fun and inspirational. The electrical box, heater and water lines are located in one framed out wall. 
The site is their playground. TAM uses the surrounding land and forest as inspiration to come up with different problems that can be solved with a 3D concrete printer. They have printed staircases on sloped land and a modern-day Stonehenge with sculptures and seating. They have 3D printed a small section of a wall with minimal connections to reduce thermal bridging. When we visited their factory, they were printing concrete wall shingles. A subtle design on each panel will come together to form a giant bighorn sheep. They are very transparent and aren't afraid of showing their mistakes. They displayed a failed print right outside their Fibonacci house to show off the interior wall construction. They showed us how much work goes into cleaning 3D printer nozzle heads and machines, an essential phase that every other company hides. In addition to printing walls, they also built custom 3D printing machines. The largest goes for around $1.2 million, while the smallest is around $250,000 and fits on a trailer. There are a couple of bad things about this project. I used a FLIR thermal imaging camera to see how much heat was lost at the base of the walls. These are indicated at the bluish-purple areas. Concrete wants to expand and contract at the same spot. Since the house was designed with offset joints, visible cracks have formed on the exterior wall. This could have been avoided with the continuous expansion joint. Despite being made from a single 3D model, the curved walls do not align. Many electrical outlet plates are also loose. The Fibonacci house is great as an Airbnb, but it is not practical as a long-term residence. Ian from TAM admits this. He views the house as a showcase for clients and investors. It's an experiment to show off the capabilities of 3D printed technology. TAM actually had plans to construct a million-dollar home, but the pandemic caused them to reassess their priorities and they settled on a smaller, more experimental home. Now the ugly. Like I said earlier, the people working for TAM are extremely creative and willing to learn, but they aren't trained architects, engineers, construction managers, or experts in this field, and it shows. The beautiful, fun, concrete shingles have gaps in between and are screwed directly over Tyvek. There's no flashing at the top of the windows or the door. There are large gaps at the front door which lets in cold air and bugs. We killed about 50 spiders in 3 hours before bailing. There's a quote that repetition leads to mastery. We can't do something once, be satisfied with an average outcome and move on. The house and all the other projects on the site are fun and have so much potential, but they are desperately lacking refinement. I see TAM as a jack of all trades and a consultant to many other businesses in the 3D printing industry, but I'm not sure what they are best at and what they want to focus on. I really appreciate the opportunity to visit Canada for the first time and see a concrete printer in action. They opened my eyes to how much research, development, and innovation is currently going on in the 3D printed world. The team at Twente Additive Manufacturing are proud Canadians trying to revitalize the city of Nelson in British Columbia, which is very admirable. I will post a full interview with co-founder Jim Zimlansky on my Patreon page soon, which will give you a little more insight into TAM's past, present and future. I'd love to visit other 3D printed projects or any other interesting architecture or construction projects. So if you know of any, leave me a comment below. If you can support me on Patreon, I'd really appreciate it. A big thank you to everyone already supporting me. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.